Okay, it's a little bit after six, and uh, we have one person not here yet, but I think we have a quorum, so we're going to go ahead and get started. If uh, everyone please stand, and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and just for all. <laughs> Okay. And Mrs. Imick, if you would please do roll call. Commissioner Summit. Here. Commissioner Stevens. Here. Commissioner Furby. Here. Commissioner Lawson. All right. Next on the agenda is the um, approval of the agenda. Does anyone have any uh, comments? I think actually you may have had a comment. Yeah. Just, uh, just for the record, we need to change in the public hearing the second full sentence from the pole to the building. The okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And is there anything else anybody notices with the agenda for this evening that needs to be adjusted? Okay. Um, anyone? Want to move that we approve the agenda? I'll move that we approve the agenda. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of approval of the agenda for this evening? Uh, aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. And then uh, approval of minutes from last time, which was Tuesday, December 3rd. And have, has everyone had a chance to look over the minutes from last time? Yes. yes. And were there any corrections, changes, edits? None that I noticed. Mm -hmm. So I move we approve the minutes from December 3rd. I'll second it. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes from Tuesday, December 3rd? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Um, we have no old business. Um, tonight we have a public hearing, and first of all, I'll just say welcome to the planning and zoning for Tuesday, February 4th, 2014. And this evening we have a public hearing CU 14-01. It's a request for a conditional use permit to allow a power coat business to be attached to, uh, to um, operations at 212 South Bullard. The building is located in the historic downtown commercial C-HD district and the applicant is Stuart Agnell, the property owner. Has uh, anyone on the commission had any ex parte conversations regarding the matter before us this evening? No. No. Okay. In that case, um, I think that, uh, Mr. Agnall, you've been here before for something, but I will still go ahead and go over the process a little bit. For a conditional use permit, uh, there are four findings that we have to meet all four. And did the city kind of explain that to you? You feel like you have a good understanding of it? Um, I'm going to defer sort of control over this to sure. my tenant. Sure. Okay. okay. In that case, then we'll have everyone um, who is going to be uh, speaking before us. And, and, you have to come up and take an oath if you want to speak. However, taking an oath does not mean you have to speak. So if anyone would like to come forward for the oath who might be presenting this evening. And you can just actually go to the microphone so that it goes on to the television. Um, yeah. So everybody can hear. Okay. All right. If you want to, just after me. I can give your name. Hi, Peter. Hi. Stuart Agnall. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. swear. That the testimony I am about to give. That the testimony you're about to give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The, truth. the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The truth. The whole truth, truth and nothing but the truth. On penalty of perjury. On penalty of perjury. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I guess we'll start with having a uh, report from the community department. I don't have my glasses.
Commissioners, Chairperson Clements. This is conditional use permit 14-01 at 212 South Bullard Street. The owner is Stuart Egnall. The applicant's representative will be John Pearson, who will be using the powder coat business at the address. Can you move your microphone? How about that? The cord is... How about now? That's a little better. Yeah. Better? Yeah, no, that's better. Um, as you know, uh, the commercial historic downtown district was recently rezoned from commercial. Uh, this is a new manufacturing use in the zone which requires a conditional use permit. This is on the use table in the land use code, table 3.2 which qualifies under indoor or outdoor operations with or without outdoor storage. So that is now conditional use in the historic commercial district. This is all with the new land use code of 2010. This location was previously used by the owner as a welding and fabrication shop. It's a type of use change on the property. There won't be as much fabrication. It will be in finishing products. So um, Mr. Pearson has some photos and I have a couple photos to show you the type of products that he'll be finishing at the location. The fabrication will still occur across the street at Mr. Egnall's property, which is currently zoned industrial. Mr. Russell, the director of the department, has contacted the New Mexico Environment Department Air Quality and Hazardous Materials Divisions and they didn't ex express any concern and they do not require additional permitting for the powder coat products that Mr. Pearson will be using on the property. <clears throat> this is a property in case any of you aren't familiar with it. Um, those doors are all open a lot so we did take a photo so that you can see the condition that the property is usually operated in. This you will notice on the left hand side of the photo is Mr. Egnall's property that is zoned industrially and that's where most of the metal fabrication will occur. The 212 South Bullard does the powder coating and any other small finishing. This is a view to the north of the property. You'll see the warehouse for the furniture store and there's also a home directly to the north of the property. This is uh, one of the districts that's a sort of mixed use residences are allowed in the area now which also is part of what triggers a conditional use permit so that the uses are compatible with residences and businesses in the area. For a conditional use permit the Planning and Zoning Commission shall make the following findings. This is one case where you need to make all, meet all four findings and may attach to the permit such reasonable requirements in addition to those specified in the land use code to ensure that the development in its proposed location will not endanger the public health or safety, will not injure the value of adjoining or nearby properties, will be in harmony with the area in which it is located, and will be in conformity with the town's comprehensive plans or other plans officially adopted by the town. It is the opinion of staff that this conditional use permit be approved with the following two conditions. No volatile organic compounds will be used in the treatment, finishing, or manufacture of a commercial product at this site, and no powder coating products that produce off-gas will be used in the treatment, finishing, or manufacture of a commercial product at this site. Do you have any questions, or would you like to see any of the photos again? <coughs> I have a couple questions, but I'll wait. I think until the uh, applicant. Yeah, the applicants. Okay. Talk. Well, I, uh, okay. go ahead. Go ahead, Leah. Go back to this one. Yeah. Uh, so, how did you decide on these two conditions? Uh, Mr. Russell and I um, did quite a bit of research. We weren't quite sure about these products and what procedure was involved. And it seems like the only time they become harmful to the residences nearby or if these type of products are used. But um, Mr. Pearson brought in his MSDS sheets were also a part of your packet. And his products that he uses 
do not contain them. So we just want to add in that additional protection. So if somebody else wanted a powder coating shop there, they need to comply with those same conditions. It, it's more of a protective measure for the future than applying directly to Mr. Pearson's individual materials because the ones he use, uses do not produce these. So we would be approving... Well, let me add a bit to that. It's also, so if Mr. Pearson's business grows, he would have to move if he wanted to use some of these type of products or get additional permitting from the state or things like that. But if he continues the business at the scale he's doing it now with the products he's using now, then these conditions maintain that level and that scale of production. So we would be approving the conditional use is for power coating, is power that coating. it? Yes. Powder coating. Yes, the power coating business. And so when you're thinking of it in the future, it could be powder coating with using some other technique. Yes. And that's why you would yes. you recommend these conditions. Yes, so that it, it um, limits the scope of products that can be used at this location because of the uh, proximity to residences and Bullard Street and pedestrian traffic. It, it also reduces the um, odors that are emitted from the business. Some of those other compounds um, smell, like spray paint or things like that. So when you say don't produce off-gas, what do you mean by off-gas? Mr. Pearson can probably answer that more technically, okay. but from our point of view, there are some compounds that when they're heated, they, pr they have a reaction and they produce gas. Um, Mr. Pearson's product is simply baked onto, it's electrostatically sprayed and then baked in a large oven, which he can give you more technical description of. And it's, I don't know whether I should ask him or you this, but it looked like in the technical information that uh, there are volatile organic compounds just less than 1%, is that right? Yes. And, and that's in the MSDS. So is that considered none? Um, but if you'll, um, we can look at them together, but it has no um, harmful effects. Uh, after, under a certain percentage, they don't have a harmful effect. And the um, effects that could come from these products are listed on those sheets also. So he can probably go line by line on yeah, those I'm sheets with you. Your condition, though, which says no volatile. Less than 1%. The products he submitted the MSDS sheets for are acceptable to us. And we also spoke to the state and the process and products he's using are acceptable to them with no air quality permit whatsoever. I'm just wondering about the wording of this, which says not basically none. So should we... If, if you would like to amend the condition, you, you may, to say less than 1%. Okay, I'm just wondering. So, thank you. And I think I do have a question for you. Uh, is it because of the low potential for any kind of hazardous material that uh, disposal of the containers of the product was not made a condition that they meet certain criteria for disposal? Uh, he can answer that for you a little better, but we also spoke to the hazardous materials department of the environment department, and there are no requirements for disposal of the products. He'll have more of a problem keeping the dust and dirt off of his product than the other way around, from what this state explained to us. And do I understand that the product starts at this location, but then it gets moved to the other location across the street to be finalized? Uh, no, it goes the other way. Um, it's fabricated at Stuart Egnall's location across the street, and it's completed at this location. It's finished. And just out of curiosity, were this an industrial, uh, this one, his other location is under the industrial. If this was also industrial, would he have needed a conditional? No. I was just curious about that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Mrs. Indick? No. Is there a screen that you would like me to leave it on, or go ahead and... This one would be good, I okay. think. Okay, and so I, my understanding is that uh, John Pearson is here to testify. Um, yeah, okay, if you would care to come up and give your testimony, if you would, please, at the mic. 
And you didn't have the understanding of the four conditions that you need to meet, is that correct? Yes. Good, okay. Yeah, would okay. It, uh, my wife is the president of the company and she speaks better than I, would it be okay? <laughs> yes, sir. yes. Thank you. Uh, I'll remain available for yeah. uh, technical support. <laughs> Well, based on conversations, um, I'm uh, Melanie Pearson. Melanie, okay, thank you. President of Conservation by Design. And Bullard Street Exhibit Fabricators um, is a division, is the fabrication division of Conservation by Design. And so Conservation by Design, maybe you read in your packet, is an interpretive planning and exhibit design business. Uh, we do work all around the country, um, primarily interpretive signs or exhibits like either interior or exterior for nature trails or... Um, visitor centers, nature centers, that kind of thing. We do a lot of work for um, like Forest Service, BLM, um, Bureau of Reclamation, uh, different scenic byway committees, state parks, county parks, that kind of thing. So uh, this uh, fabrication business or aspect of the business is more a way for us to retain better control over the end product that we're basically reselling to our clients. And what we're powder coating then are the bases for these signs, whether they're you know sort of traditional uh, National Park Service style sign bases or more custom work. Um, and you'll see in your packet there's some photos of some of the examples of projects that we've worked on in the past. So just context for this and. And the purpose here, we don't plan to be, um, you know, throwing out the shingle and, and advertising powder coating far and wide. The primary intention here is that we're powder coating the products that are already under contract for our clients. And yes, we will be, you know, maybe taking some powder coating jobs here and there, but but we don't plan on um, doing a lot of it, I guess. We just wanted to increase the capacity of what we can actually handle ourselves. So in terms of addressing these findings, <laughs> that's what I was getting to. Okay. <laughs> um, so after discussions with Jamie, she kind of led me through what are, you know, maybe some of the points to address here in these findings. So if we just go through, um, point number one would be that we uh, do not endanger the public health or safety. And I guess the the main point I wanted to make here is that all the products that we're using um, are non-hazardous and contain no volatile or contain no less than one percent of the volatile organic compounds that are concerned. So the, the MSDS sheets that were included in your packet are the two most common colors that we'll be using. However, I did also bring additional MSDS sheets that sort of cover the. There's five different types. There's you know E series and P series, different powders that we could potentially be using on our products and all of those less than 1% of the VOC. So um, just to reiterate that and also say that I have those available you know, for further inspection if you should require that. Okay, point number two, unless there's any questions about that one. I just have one question. Okay. In reading the material, it sounded like all of the application would be done inside the building? Definitely. Okay. Yes. And actually, inside the building, requirements are such that, that we have built a booth um, within that um, that has a filtration system. It has a motor on it that basically pulls the air so that all the powder is the overspray of the powder mm -hmm. is actually drawn into a double filtration system. And that was going to be my next question. If the fire marshal had indicated uh, any retrofits or modifications yes, to the building. Yes, because purchase a fire protection system. Yeah, and for the ventilation in the spray booth. Right. Okay. Thank you. Point number two, will not injure the value of adjoining or nearby properties. So uh, we're saying there will be no noticeable smell or increased noise associated with our operations and our residential and commercial neighbors have expressed support of our activities. We also have a petition that um, we went around and collected signatures of our immediate neighbors. So we... Um, no, we didn't go around collecting them. I specifically correct, uh, collected them from the direct neighbors. Yes. So the direct neighbors that we've talked to and received support, signatures of support from Cecilia. I'm sorry. Okay. Cecilia McNichol, who is the owner of the meat market that's um, opposite, uh, I guess, San Vicente right there, south. Um, 
she operates the meat market there. Um, and then Ruben Hernandez, which is a neighbor directly um, west of the building in question. Uh, Denise Kennedy, who uh, is part of Home Furniture, directly across the street. Janie Katz, who owns another, um, the warehouse building there um, in that neighborhood as well. And then Carol Morrison, who is the owner of the residence that's directly north of this building. So everybody right there is in support. And has, you know, if they've had any questions and we've explained to them, given them a tour of the facility and, you know, what the equipment and what's involved in the process. So I've tried to do due diligence there. Do you have any questions about that point? Um, I'll go ahead, Yeah, yeah. Um, if you were to increase production, could there be or would there be more odor? Uh, no, because of the product that we're using. Okay. Okay. We've we've chosen to, you know, work with the product just from our own, you know, sort of business. What we're about is being environmentally friendly, and and the the interpretive exhibits that we create are about, you know, helping people better appreciate their, you know, relationship with the landscape or with the particular resource or whatever. So we've we've chosen this technology as a more environmentally friendly alternative to paint. Mm -hmm. um, and we've chosen a, a manufacturer of the product that also has a commitment to producing environment, environmentally friendly products. Okay, so point three here is that it will be in harmony with the area in which it is located. Um, the building is located across the intersection from a welding shop. The rear part of the building that we occupy continues to host welding and small engine repair. There's also production and shipping activity that occurs in that section of Bullard in the form of the tile company and uh, shipping activity that occurs with the home with the furniture store across the street. So um, it seems, from our perspective, that it's a you know compatible and friendly use that it's a continuation of, you know, sort of the, the pattern of use down there. So you don't anticipate, according to uh, what I've read, a significant increase in larger vehicles that would be going up No, you know, even if we were going, you know, full speed ahead and, and generating a lot, we would only have a freight truck there maybe like once a week. And then uh, finding number four. So as I, this is the one I had the hardest time with, as I understand it, um, because the historic commercial downtown, maybe you do too, <laughs> the historic commercial downtown district is a mixed use district, um, then it's been suggested that our activities qualify for a conditional use permit. So we're eligible for a conditional use permit in that area if this committee so agrees. So I'm not sure if there's anything else to address there. Uh, I guess one final question. You're familiar with the conditions and yes. you're comfortable with those conditions? Definitely. Okay. Anyone else have questions? Is there anyone else who wanted to speak in favor? Okay. And is there anyone who would like to... Oh. Can I just, can I just, I just agree with the president that shouldn't say no while uh -huh. yeah, That seems right for misinterpretation. Yeah. So less than 1% yeah. would be all more of our, accurate. All of our data sheets say less than 1%. Okay. To change. Okay. Thank I you. Oh. Staff. <laughs> no. oh. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So in our material, where does it say exactly what it is we're what the use is that we're recommending. I see a couple of different statements, different places. Um, the, the conditional use. So where does it say that in our material? Just the wording of it, I'd like to know. what. The best one is the description that requests for conditional use permit to allow a powder coat business to be operated at 212 South Bullard. That's where the typo occurred, and that may have caused a problem with the agenda. It's also in the staff report. Uh, so where are you saying it is? 
Yeah, where should uh, I look? It's in the description. It's also, I can put it up on the slide for you. Sure. Okay, it's a change in use which triggers the conditional use, and it is a manufacturing use, and in specific, it's a powder coating business. That doesn't say anything specific there, so that's why I'm wondering what it is and where. The specific business is the powder coating business at 212 South Bullard. And the conditional use is triggered because it's a new manufacturing use. I understand why it's triggered. I'm wondering what it is we're... I want to know specifically what we're recommending. In the staff report, it just says this is a request to allow a new manufacturing use. It doesn't say anything about... So if you'd like a new motion, you can um, make an emotion, a motion to allow a new manufacturing use of powder coat business at 212 South Bullard. Because I'm just thinking about the future. You know, if we're allowing a new manufacturing use, that could be anything. <laughs> yes. So in, in your motion, you can specify a um, coding business and then attach what conditions you find appropriate. All right, thanks. Okay. Is there anyone who would like to speak opposed? Absolutely. I'm, I'm curious, is, would, would there be a problem with not getting specific and just permitting light manufacturing in what is obviously a historically grandfathered heavy manufacturing facility? I think Mr. Russell can probably answer that question for you. Yes, there would be. Um, this has been used for welding and other kind of manufacturing processes like that, but there's a whole slew of new manufacturing processes that might, in fact, have harmful emissions or whatever that we would, you know, want to see uh, constrained because of the mixed nature of the use right there. So we wouldn't want it to be open-ended. I understand uh, um, the, the concern about well, what is the... A specific use that's being allowed, and in this case, it's the operation of a powder, powder coating facility that entails a booth in which the powder is applied, and an oven in which the uh, uh, the applied powder is baked on. So there's a couple, at least two steps in that process. Um, and so that's the thing that we are specifically addressing that was generated by. Um, the building changes that had to occur, the fire marshal's inspection that had to occur, and the other um, aspects of the uh, uh, development and manufacture of the uh, signs and interpretive features are, are um, not constrained by the same potential for emitting odors or creating some kind of nuisance to the neighbors. Is that correct? Questions or any for any for the city or the applicant? Thank you. Okay, we're open for discussion. For discussion. I'm aware of the product to some degree. I realize it's a very green product. Matter of fact, it's pretty much the standard from the state I just moved from about four years ago and I believe it's probably becoming the standard in many other states. So from that point of view, I applaud you in uh, what you're attempting to do. would prefer it over paint if I were the neighbor. Certainly does seem to step up from paint, which environmentally has all kinds of issues, even the better. Any other? I will entertain a motion if someone would like to do a motion. Okay, I move that we uh, recommend CU 14-01. Uh, 
a conditional use permit to allow a powder coat business to be operated at 212 South Bullard. Um, finding that it will not endanger the public health or safety, it will not injure the value of adjoining or nearby properties, it will be in harmony with the area in which it's located, and it will be in conformity with the town's comprehensive plan or other plans officially adopted by the town, with two conditions. One, that... Um, No, let's see, how are we going to word this? Um, less than 1%. That uh, no products will be used that have more than 1% volatile organic compounds. Uh, and no powder coating products that produce off gas will be used in the treatment, finishing, or manufacture of a commercial product at this site. Oh, second. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second, and I think Ms. Imbeck, the, um, you call for roll for that. Aye. Commissioner Clement? Aye. Commissioner Kirby? Aye. Okay. All right, the motion passes. And with conditional use, uh, it is uh, finalized here. It does not go on to city council, so this is approved. And thank you very much for a really good presentation and for coming down and going through the process. Okay, to mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so next on the agenda, um, we have no new business. We do not have a community forum this evening. Um, and do we have any reports? Well, actually, while we're on community forum, I have a question for staff. Uh, I had someone ask me about the potential of doing a community forum in the future. I, I, some people are aware we have recently purchased a building, and it's going to be used for a nonprofit community center focused on yoga, meditation, and those sorts of things with a renter. We own the building and we'll be receiving rents. So I am an owner, but I'm not a part of the actual business, and it is a nonprofit. They were wondering about doing a community forum, but I'm not sure if that's a conflict of interest for me being here and having them present as the owner of the building. Um, I see that Jamie has turned the mic my direction. Um, we could talk about it uh, uh, after the meeting, my own uh, sort of off the top of my head impression is that it's probably more along the lines of promoting a business than explaining some kind of community issue whether it's fire safety or future of water in the area uh, or something like that but uh, you know that's just a first uh, kind of response and we can certainly discuss uh, it further in terms of promoting economic development or you know something like that well, a community forum is, is basically can be a rather wide variety of things that affect our community, and this is a nonprofit community center. So the idea would be to be open to a lot of uses for the community, not just. But what would be the point of the community forum? Uh, they would just like to come forward as the business starts to sort of introduce it to the town, so that people are aware of what's available. So, okay. Uh, do we have reports from staff? No. Okay. Uh, any reports from the commission? Any other community input? Non related to the hearing this evening. The cell phone is moving along. Where is it? Uh, um, they've got it so draped you can't even see back in there, but my understanding is. Um, since we cannot use the one word, the removal of all extraneous parts that were not unique to the original building are being successfully removed. So, very excited about that. Any uh, estimated dates of that portion of it being done? I think fundraising comes in. That, that, that portion is covered. The next portion we need to write more grants, get more money. Okay. 
All right. If no one has anything more, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I second that. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you.